Tonight's film is a dramatization based on the account of Jan and Robbie Tabor, court transcripts, published reports and interviews. Some scenes and dialogue have been created for dramatic purposes. From Cedar Rapids to ask how I was. Uh huh. After the hysterectomy, and Mom said, "You better talk to Robbie direct." And John said he'd, he'd understand if we couldn't. But we can, can't we, Jan? I guess. Without my reopening the business, because I couldn't do that, and we'd make it. Just. Don't you see? This must be a sign. We could never afford it before, and now we can. It's meant. The mother is certain. She asked her doctor to find a home. John knows the doctor, and he told her about us. And John said that, that he could call a family lawyer, another John, John Monroe, if we say yes. We're having a baby. Uh, the father, well, he's in, he's in North Carolina. Yeah, I have his number. His name? All right. Scott Seafelt. Uh, it's E, well, E-L-D-T. No, don't worry, he'll sign. Uh, I gotta, I gotta go. Okay, uh, I'll call you back. Hey, Dad. Hello, Kara. Kara. Nice oh. to be home. Here, let me. You get tired of sand and dry air. Well, you just get settled. I'll make us some coffee. Appears like you spend a lot of time in the kitchen. And that's what comes from rallying around the house. Like a bean in a tin can. Come and gain weight. Cares. She says she's gained weight. Some things you don't talk about, some things you don't have. down. I, I got something to tell you. Shorty was right. God's given us a grandchild. I'm getting 
giving it away. I'm having it adopted. Kara! <sighs> Dr. Burrish has found it a good home. This isn't a puppy! I know that, Ma. A baby is part of God's divine plan. Ma, I, I dream of having children. But not this way. I want to give it a proper home with the mother and the father. And who's the father, Kara? Uh, Scott. Well, you haven't known him that long. He's the father. And he agrees with us? Oh, he couldn't care less. Well, why didn't you take precautions? Well, when I was in eighth grade and I had all those x-rays, I believe that stuff made you sterile. Now, where did you get that idea? Some magazine. Anyway, I got somebody taking my place at work while I'm in the hospital. And in a week, I'll be back on the job. Uh, I can take care of it, Karen. I'm 71, but I'm strong and God willing. I can. Mom, I can... it's been arranged. Now, I've had a lot of time to think about this while you and Dad were away. I know what I'm doing. Why are you so certain? It's a gift. Don't you understand? We can't turn our backs on a helpless child. Mom, I just don't want to talk about it anymore. This is the best way. How can you say that? It's done, Ma. Does it hurt as much as they say? Uh, well, yes. It's the worst pain you've ever felt in your life. <laughs> And they're all telling you to wait, hang on. And you're thinking, well, whose baby is this anyway? And then they tell you to push because someone's life does depend on it. To push because it's not easy being born, being forced into this world. And the most wonderful moment of all, to push. All right, get your breath, Kara. Breathe for us now. Okay. One more, one more big one. Here we go. You ready now? Okay, let's push, push. Keep it going. Good. Good. There you go. Oh, Gina. Oh. After all the years of trying, I'm having a baby. <laughs> Do you think something's wrong? We haven't heard a word. Oh, no. With first babies, it can take days. Mm. Let's get lunch. No. I want to clean <laughs> everything. You like that, don't you? You like that, don't you? So, Miles, I see your role as being somewhat similar. Nana. Peter Pan, can you handle that? Okay, shake. Go ahead, shake. There you go. Come here. Come here. Come back here. That's a good boy. Yeah. Hey, Mom. I got something. Here, Miles. Here, Miles. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, this worked for you and your brothers and your sisters. I'd love to hear. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Yes, until 8 o'clock. That's right. Mm -hmm. Little angel. Dad, don't you want to hold your granddaughter? No. Yeah, your wife's on the phone. 
Oh yeah. Listen, we better not get too excited because there's still a chance. John said the mother's absolutely sure. But what if her plans change? I mean, they have to wait till everything's legal. Don't you wonder what she looks like? Did you even hear me? I can't wait to see her. Dear baby boo. Kara? Hi. I'm John Monroe. Hi. How are you feeling? Not bad. Still want to go ahead with this? Yeah. I've spoken to Scott Seafelt. He'll sign. Told you. This is the release of custody form. I can get it there, right? Here you go, Mom. Have you thought of names? Uh, yeah, Rebecca, Brianna, Sarah. Brianna, oh, Brie like a cheese. Well, maybe oh, not then. Oh, oh, Gina, thank you so much. Okay. I'll call you when I get to Iowa. Hey, as soon as I finish Friday, I'm there. Okay. Why don't you send some of her clothes so Miles can get used to her? Oh. And tell her I'm her dad. You bet I will. I'll call as soon as I get there. Okay. Drive safely. I love you. I love you.
Nature takes nine months to get you used to this idea. You're just going to have to run just you as you plunge right in. <laughs> So scary. Ooh, you're being terrific. What does it take? Hmm? What does it take? Well, I could tell you all it takes is love, but it's not that simple. Love could be a need, your need. Just give what the baby needs. Thanks. I've given her a name. As soon as I saw her, I knew. Jessica. Jessica, that's a lovely name. <laughs> you get some sleep, Jessica. 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 You're my daughter. Yes. Yes. I'm your mother. Yes. Daughter. Mother. You and me. Are you sure she's okay? Postpartum depression. She feels a bit upset. That's natural. But everything's fine. We're getting there, step by step. I go before the judge in a few days, and then you can go home. So how's it going with you guys? What? <laughs> We're fantastic. She likes sleeping in the big bed with me. I mean, you like it. Look, I've got a picture of her. She looks just like you, without the mustache. Huh? I gave her away. What? I gave her up for adoption. Why in the hell did you do that? Because I wanted to. What about you and Boy Wonder Scott? I said it's because I wanted her. You know, you lie like a rug. You lied to your boyfriend, you lied to me, you probably lied to your parents. I don't know you're not lying now. Because you know. Well, I wanted him to hate me. Now he does. Why? Because I hated myself for giving up my baby. And I wanted company. And now there are two of us that feel the same way about me. Here we go. Here's your room. Oh, boy. It's your room, Jesse. Here's your room, Jesse. This is your bed. You see your bed? She likes her bed. You see your room, honey? Daddy and I put up all the wallpaper. Now you ready for your surprise? Are you ready? Okay, I want you to meet. I want you to meet Miles. Don't lick, don't you lick. You see Miles? You see Miles? You say hi. Oh, here she goes. Hi. Oh, Jimmy, you want to see her? And you know Gina? And there's Uncle Fairy. Get her nose, Ronnie. Get her nose. <laughs> I told you. 
Oh, oh I wish Dad had lived to see this. It would have made him so happy. You know. Say hi to Daddy. Wave your hands. In some mystical way, I feel like she's truly mine. Well, she is. Do you think we're going to spoil her by letting her sleep with us every time she comes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I'm going to spoil you because you smell so sweet. Mm. There's nothing like it. No. to see so many of you here tonight. The way we usually start is uh, by sharing stories with each other. Uh, I don't think I've seen you here before. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and share your story with us? I'm, my name is Kara. Hi, Kara. Hi. I don't think I'm really supposed to be here because um, I know where my daughter is. I, I gave her away. Oh. When? A month ago. Oh my God, honey, you gotta do something before it's too late. I mean, look at me. You want your daughter to end up feeling the way that I do? No, I, I signed the papers, see. Were you counseled? Um, no. Oh. Did they tell you the ache you'd feel in your heart? The emptiness she's gonna feel? Did they tell you what it will be like never to hear her first footstep or see her smile on her very first Christmas? If you want your baby back, you have to fight for her now. We'll help you get a lawyer. We'll help every inch of the way. I got a letter from Kara Clausen. Dear baby Boo, releasing you for adoption is the hardest thing I've ever done. But because of the love I have, it is by far the best decision. I think of the love that surrounds you now, and I think of the overwhelming joy you brought your mom and dad. They are blessed with a beautiful child, and you are blessed with people who can give you what I cannot. God bless you and keep you always. Mom. I feel like I've taken Jessie from her. Robbie, she made a choice. Nobody forced her, certainly not you. It seems to me she's made it lovingly and responsibly. This one for you. Kara's mother, when it comes time for her to know she was adopted, let her know it was because we love her so much that we were able to let her go from my heart to yours, her biological Iowa grandmother. They want the best for Jesse, same as we do. Mom! Mom, can I talk? I went to this meeting of concerned birth parents. What's done's done. No, not exactly. They said I might be able to undo it, and they're willing to help. And if it works out, I'm thinking maybe I'd call her Anna. Sweet girl. You know what I see in your eyes? See that big old moon. There's a big old moon right up there. I see it right in your eyes. You know, when I was a little boy, I used to climb on my bedroom window and go up on the roof and make wishes. 
Yeah, I did. But I never thought I'd, I'd be this lucky. Not only to have a baby, but for it to be you, Jesse. You're a miracle. Hello. Robbie. Hi. There's uh, been some trouble. Kara wants Jessica back. You see, she, uh, she lied about the father. Lied. Why would she do that? John, none of this makes sense. We're legal, right? Okay, uh, there's a difference of opinion. Uh, she didn't wait the required 72 hours. Now she says she was drugged and coerced. That's hardly the way I saw it. But we're fine. We'll hold up in a court of law only. I can't be your lawyer because I'm a witness. Uh, you're taking this well. So, John, what's going to happen? Uh, there'll be a court hearing in Iowa. I'll double check all the papers as soon as I get back. I'm sure we're fine. Okay. Okay. We're taking it well. Who is this new guy? How do I know who she slept with? Take it easy. Let's look at this logically. Why would she lie? Scott Seafeld signed all the papers. He must have believed he was the father. She must have let him. But why would she put anyone through this? Why would she do that? Happy birthday. Nice of you to come all the way from North Carolina. I flew in to see you. Isn't that enough? No flowers? Not after last year. <laughs> last birthday you gave me roses. <laughs> yeah. Dan Schmidt tried to punch me out through the window of my truck. Too bad he didn't bust his hand. <laughs> I'm glad you find this funny, Kara. <laughs> Look, Kara. Let's make a clean start. For what it's worth, I gave my baby away. It's what you wanted. How do you know what I wanted? You never asked. Doesn't matter. You're not the father anyway. <sighs> well, that's news. What's going on, Kara? You ran in on me, remember? Who is it? Schmidt? Are you telling me that Schmidt is the father? Yes, Dan's the man. Why the hell are you messing around with me? You are out of my life. Now, the lawyer said for me to tell you this. I told you. Thanks. My baby. Your baby. I made her. You carried her. You gave her away. Why'd you do that? Why do you care? Maybe I know what it's like to be given away. When I was a kid, my uncle took me to State Fair. Came time to leave. He told me there was no more room for me at home, and I was come to live with him. He just took you? Shouldn't have done it, Carol. No, no. You want the baby back? 
Yes, I do. Well, you're gonna need me. Your rights as a father have been violated. Tell me about it. How do you feel having your daughter taken away from you, Dan? How do you think I feel? I've lost things my whole life. No, this time I, I'm not letting go. I'm gonna be there for her. And we're not gonna give up. Oh, there she is. Good, good. How about this way? <laughs> what, you want her to stand up? All right, here she is. What a girl. This is super Jessie. See? She can walk. She can talk. And she can fly. She can fly. Zoom, 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 zoom. zoom. Oh. <laughs> Beauty girl. Wanna go for a walk, huh? Come on with your little dad. Yeah. Oh, there's Uncle Barry. See? See? Hi, Uncle Barry. <laughs> Remember Colorado? Sure I do. Kansas and Missouri. <laughs> Dad thought I was nuts. You call that a honeymoon? I thought that was a dead Indian. No, this beauty's full of life. Wanna go for a spin? Dust out the cobwebs? Are you serious? Sure. Go on. Get out of here. Let's do it. Come on. Hi, guys. Hey, Daddy's here. Oh, looking at the flowers. Oh, oh, oh. looking at the flowers. The lawyer called. Kara's appealing the court decision, and Dan Schmidt has asked for a blood test in order to prove his paternity. I thought it was over. If it's gonna be like this, maybe it would be better for Jesse if, if we give her back. Maybe it would be better. I'll call the lawyer. You and Robbie are the only ones with legal custody of Jessica. The Iowa court says that you can keep her until this thing is sorted out. If you give her back, she won't go to Kara because Kara's parental rights have been terminated. Jessica will be placed in foster care for who knows for how long. What do we do, Gary? I'll look into it. I'll get back to you. As soon as you can. 
foster homes. To abandon her to strangers? I won't let that happen. How can we afford the legal fees, Jan? I'll get a second job. We can sell the furniture. I won't let that happen. Jesse belongs with us. Douglas, up you get. Gary called. The Iowa court says we have to draw blood. What about the affidavits? The court doesn't care what the doctors say. They don't care if her tiny veins collapse or how much it hurts? No. How did this get to be such a mess? Well, if Kara hadn't lied about the father, none of this would have happened. She's being rewarded for telling a lie. How could the courts do that? take Jesse's DNA profile and compare it with the blood samples taken from the two alleged fathers. That's a good girl. That's a good It's okay. That's okay. Do you want me to proceed? Man, that's a good girl. That's a good girl. Don't worry. You're really brave. Yes, you are. Kiss me then. Hmm. What's that? Hmm? What's that? Let's go fishing. Come on, let's go fishing. Mm. I used to think the world was safe. Jesse, look at Daddy. Look at Daddy. Dan, Dan, the trucker man, over. Dan, the blood test came through. Scott, zero chance of being the father. You, 99.9. That's as high as it gets. Over. She's mine, over. All yours. See you at home, Daddy Dan. Over and out. Over and out. Okay? Gary, listen to me. Give her back to Kara. Get the judge to give her back to Kara. You can't. Robbie, the law says legally Kara's no longer the mother. I don't want Dan Schmidt to get Jesse. So have Kara's rights restored. We could if we don't fight Kara's motion to have her rights reinstated, but that takes time. Then once she gets her rights back, that's the I end of it. I want to give Jesse back to her mother, Gary. How can we send her to a man we don't know? Who the hell is Dan Schmidt? You ready for court? Yeah, are you? I just want it over. And Robbie DeBoer. Snooping around. 
All my life I've had people put me down like that, telling me I'm no good. And you're a saint. <laughs> you, uh, you want to marry one? What? A saint. No. But I'll marry you. You sure? You're a lot of blustered and bark, Dan Schmidt, but underneath, you're just a big old teddy bear. <laughs> He has a son, Travis, 16, by a first marriage that he didn't see for nine years. And then with another woman, he has a daughter, Amanda, that he's never even seen. She's 10, 11 years old. And both women had to take him to court for non-payment of support. They had to take his wages. Well, he's never, never seen his own daughter? No. And they even live in the same town. He's abandoned two children. What's he going to do with Jesse? Here, there's more. Oh, you're sweet, Mark. It's so cute. We go to the Iowa court and we tell them. Right. They're not going to risk giving Jesse to a man like that. You're sweet, That's her. No. Look, that's Kara. There's a waiter just inside the door. That must be him. After your marriage to Mr. Hoffpower, did Mr. Schmidt continue to see Travis on any kind of a regular basis? No. Did he pay any child support during that period of time? No. How do you know Mr. Schmidt? Dan Schmidt is the father of my daughter, Amanda. Did you and Mr. Schmidt date for any period of time? We went out about a dozen times. This was not a one night stand? No. Did you continue to see Mr. Schmidt after you became pregnant with Amanda? Yes. Barbara, had you discussed with Mr. Schmidt the fact that Amanda was his child and that you wanted him to take responsibility for her? I told him I'd leave him alone and only do what I had to do. And that was to file paternity. And has Mr. Schmidt ever initiated on his own any contact with Amanda? No. Thank you. Mrs. DeBoer, I'm sorry, I, I just have to say this. If Dan fought for his other kids, maybe it wouldn't hurt so bad. Imagine what it's like for Amanda, reading this in the newspapers, and knowing he didn't give a rat's butt about her. Mrs. DeBoer, he still scares me. Don't let him get your child, whatever you do. Thank you. Barbara was a one-night stand. I don't care what she said. I didn't even know about Amanda until she was five years old. And Joanne. Sure, I made a hit her once or twice when we were married. She could go at it pretty good herself. I wanted to go Listen, up there. Listen, nothing they say can take away the fact that you're Anna's father. Now, come on. We're getting her back for Christmas. No, I'm hey, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Jingle bells, jingle bells, Oh, what fun it is. Present. She's sleeping? Yeah, 
Bon appétit. Thank you. She's all right. better sit down. You've got your daughter back. Whoa! Yeah! You're the biological father of Jessica, but you never abandoned her, and your rights were never terminated. The courts denied the DeBoer's petition to adopt. She's ours. Whoa! Does, does, does Kara know? No, I thought you'd like to tell her. Yeah! Whoa! The best interests of the child does not become material in the proceeding until abandonment has been established. What does that mean? It means that the court is going to give a child to Dan Schmidt, and then, after he has it, they're going to investigate whether he is a fit father. I'm not going to let them do that to our baby. There's no way I'm giving Jesse to that man. No way in hell. Maybe we should take her away. Your family in Holland said they'd help. I would never do that. What kind of a life would that be for Jesse? What, what happens when she's older and says, you kidnapped me from my parents? Huh? No, that would be completely irresponsible. You think I'm irresponsible? I didn't say that. I don't take good care of her? That's not what I said. You're the best mother in the world. I have done everything I know that I can do. I pay all the bills. I've done all the legal stuff. I've written letters to anyone who might be able to help. And I'm the one who's irresponsible. Hey. I'm working three jobs. What do you want? You want me to be the bookkeeper, too? The bookkeeper has news for you. We're broke. Our legal defense fund is zeroed out. How are we going to pay for another appeal? What are we going to do? That's why I thought of your stupid Holland with its stupid tulips Forget and its about stupid Holland. damn windmills. Forget it's, about it. This Forget. isn't about Holland. We have a small, defenseless child to protect. We can't give her to a man who has abandoned two children, who hit his first wife and claims it was in self-defense. What happens when she cries and cries? What's he going to do with her? What are we going to do? Don't you? You better go inside. Well, why don't you just say it, Jan? You blame me for getting sick, for not being able to have a baby. Don't talk nonsense. 
I could give her up. I could still give her up. I could give Jessica to him if that was the right thing to do, but it's not, and you know it. Where are you going? Jan! got no one to yell at, so I take it out on Yana. I think his pain is greater than mine. I think it may destroy us. Oh, gosh. Such terrible things. Mm. <laughs> right here at home, a terrible thing is about to happen to a little girl, and no one knows. So no one cares. Oh, he's back. to see her, but I don't. And so, will this little girl who has known no other parents but Robbie and Jan de Boer be returned to those who, in her eyes, may seem total strangers? <laughs> Look the how big she is. She can appeal to a pope for all I care. The Boers say they intend to appeal the recent Iowa court decision. Are you ready? Is it set? Okay, here we go. Here we go. You better be ready because here we come. Happy, happy birthday, Jesse. Happy, happy, happy. Happy first birthday. You make your first wish. See that? Can you blow? <gasps> yeah. oh, come on. I want a second opinion, a third, a fourth. Have we broken the law? Okay, thanks. We have a grace period. Oh, yeah? Where's the grace? Hmm? In a case that's capturing national attention, the U.S. Supreme Court today denied an appeal by Jan and Robbie DeBoer. The court stated that at this point, all avenues of appeal having not been fully explored, the hearing is denied. Considering the same case, the Iowa Supreme Court ruled that although it would be alluring to consider the best interests of the child, 
Iowa law clearly dictates that the father's rights supersede the child's. Well, we've done a lot of work in terms of children's rights, and we just think it's important that somebody listen to what's best for Jessica. With their rehearing denied, it would appear that little Jessica will soon be taken from the only mother and father she has ever known and returned to strangers she has never seen. She'll be coming back to her parents. That's who she'll be coming back to. We keep winning. The divorce keep losing. But guess what, folks? They still have our baby. Put our faith in the law. And the courts let the divorce keep banning while they appeal. The garbage just never stops. I bought her new clothes. We're not even going to fit her by the time we get her back. Why don't you just go and get her? What, just take her? Show a judge in Michigan the ruling from Iowa. They have to comply. Done. We're going to Michigan. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you Daniel Schmidt? No. Jackie, Dan says we're getting the royal runaround here. Tell her the press is here. He wants to tell you to know that the press is here. Pick my nose when I'm driving my truck. They, they want to take my license. The divorce, take our child. They don't care. They do nothing. You tell her that. Dan, come on. You're going to get thrown in jail. i got to call you back. Do your ears hang low? Do they wiggle to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder like a... Do you? Oh, you are so smart. Ears. Hang low. I love you. She is young. She is so bright. I'll be five minutes. Soldier. Do your ears hang low? Milk, milk, milk. And you tie them in a bow. Shoulder like a continental sword. Do your ears hang low? There. That car's been going back and forth all morning. It's just lost. Let's do it again. <laughs> oh, what do you see? Huh? What do you see over there? I, I see. I see. I, I, I see a slide. Yes, you do. Are you going to play on that today? Yeah. What else are you going to play on? I'm going to play on, on, on the doggy puzzle. Will you give me a kiss? Who needs a paralegal when I've got you? Actually, I could use one. So, does Jessica have rights? We're working on it. Shouldn't even be a question, should it?
Robbie, we don't know who it is. You're getting jumpy. Of course I'm jumpy. Mommy. Mommy's just being silly, Jesse. Are all the other windows locked? Everything's okay. Just settle down. We're okay. I understand your feelings, Mr. Schmidt. Oh, sure you do. The city of Ann Arbor could be sued if we participate in the forcible removal of Jessica DeBoer. Her name is Anna Schmidt. You go over there by yourself. You'll be arrested for kidnapping. Excuse me, my own baby. I am just telling you how serious this is. We're out of here. Robbie DeBoer, Robbie DeBoer. Everyone sides with Robbie DeBoer. She thinks I'm a low life because I got a dirt job. And what's he, just a printer? Okay, I made a mistake. Why can't she just give it back? Well, she probably wants me to abandon Anna so she can say, see, he dumps his kids. I tell you, Anna's gonna hate them for this. When she's eight or nine years old and she starts missing something, what's, what's, what's Robbie DeBoer gonna say then, huh? Gee, your parents loved you, but we wouldn't give you back. Mr. Schmidt, you are Mr. Schmidt. No, I'm the cookie monster. Why can't you press leave us alone? How long we're not even supposed to talk to the press. Come on, just a few and seconds. And the things you you're talking. right. Everything Robbie DeBoer tells you to write. You know, when are you going to learn the truth? Dan. You don't know the first thing about me. Hello? Mrs. DeBoer? I have to warn you. The Schmitz are in Ann Arbor. They're trying to take Jessica. sound asleep. You can't keep watch all night. I'll get security people. Jan. The Iowa District Court cited the DeBoers for failing to appear with Jessica. They're in contempt. That's for sure. If they enter the state of Iowa, they'll be arrested. Maybe I ought to hire that private eye again. The bad news is, a Michigan judge has issued a temporary order restraining you from removing Jessica. And she's your baby. I bet they had that judge over for dinner. I bet he's in Robbie DeBoer's pocket. We've got you a good local lawyer. She represents our cases in Michigan. Look. The DeBoers broke the law. You'll be out of that hearing and home with Jessica. I mean, Anna, in no time. <laughs> oh, you're being so silly. Oh, look at those toes. All right, come on. Get up here. We're going to finish the story. Can I have some tea? You are joking. <laughs> quick, quick, before he takes all your toes. Quick, quick. Where's that mouse? There he is. That's right. There he is. Emma, I like that picture. <laughs> Me too. It's a cozy picture of mush. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Those are the stars. Good night, noises everywhere. Mommy, I miss you. Oh, sometimes I miss you so much. I only have to work for a few more days. And tomorrow, we're coming home early. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Do you know why we're coming home early? Mm -hmm. Because of the birthday party. There you go, you take your video. Mommy, mommy. <laughs>
See me? See me? See? I'm so scared about the trial tomorrow. They're gonna take her away? No. No court in the right mind. It's gonna give Jesse to Dan Schmidt. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. You really believe that? The child has remained with the DeBoers for a little over two years now, up to very recently with the permission of the Iowa courts. Some people suggested that if the Iowa court had taken the child from the DeBoers at the time of their first decision, that uh, we wouldn't have all these proceedings. But you know, courts usually, usually like to keep status quo. It is true that through no fault of Mr. and Mrs. Schmidt, that over the last two years, they have not had any contact with the child. The court is placing a great deal of importance on the damage that would be done to the child if she were plucked from Mr. and Mrs. De Boer's custody and suddenly placed in a strange environment. Every expert has testified there would be serious traumatic injury. For the best interests of this child, the court should award custody at this time to Mr. and Mrs. DeBoer. I know how deeply hurt Mr. and Mrs. Smith are at this time, but I would ask you to maybe consider a suggestion the court has. Think of the possibility of saying, enough. We'd be heroes. People all over the United States would say, these people have acted in the best interests of the child. All I'm asking you to do is consider it. Courts in recess. Months later, the Michigan Supreme Court upheld the appeals decision overruling Judge Ager. Baby Jessica must return to the Schmitz a month from today. My job as court-appointed therapist is to facilitate things for Jessica. I recommend that visits by the Schmitz begin as soon as possible. She'll know who we are. I understand that you have petitioned the U.S. Supreme Court for an appeal. We don't want to confuse Jessica any more than necessary. Until the transfer is irreversible, you will be referred to as Kara and Dan, not Mom and Dad. Agree? If and when the transfer takes place, I recommend that the DeBoers be allowed to visit to ease the transition. They wouldn't bring Jessica back to us in Iowa when the court told them to. You know how that hurt. There's a contempt order that says they'll be arrested if they sit foot in Iowa. I'm not lifting it. Why can't they visit? Because we don't want them coming to Iowa and take our new baby. Oh, Mr. Schmidt, that's hardly going They're to be the case. They're not going to take Chloe. Now, Anna's got, Jessica is going to cry a bit. I know that, but after a while, she's going to be fine, back with her family. You're going to call her Anna, aren't you? In spite of what everyone says, you're going to strip away her name? You may hate me, 
But it's Jessica you're hurting. Let's talk about the first visit. So now, Jesse, we wait for our last hope, the Supreme Court. I wonder if any of those judges could take their little two-year-old, walk into a black forest and just leave her there. This is like knowing the day you're going to die. August 2nd. August 2nd. August 2nd. Thousands of signatures. Justice for Jesse. Jan's collecting more, and then he's taking it to Washington. We're making an emergency request to allow you to keep Jesse during the appeal. They can't turn us down. I know they can. We're doing a bunch of interviews. People have to see Jesse as an individual, as a person, and that the system shouldn't do this to her. Someone has to care. Robbie, the transfer arrangements, if it happens, the court insists that we go over this. I'll come to your house at two o'clock and I'll take Jessica and drive to the police station and their lawyer will affect the transfer. Are you okay with that? I'm not okay about anything. Good night, Kenny. That's right. Good night, Kenny. You know who they are? Yeah. Who are they? I don't know. They're photographers. And they're taking your picture. Because you're very special. the page. Good night, mouse. Good night, your house. Good night, mouse. Good night. Good night, nobody. Mush! Jan DeBoer of Ann Arbor, Michigan, stood in front of the United States Supreme Court in Washington today with a large scroll of names in support of himself, <laughs> his wife, and their two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Jessica. The couple lost a court case to keep the girl after a court in Iowa awarded custody to the child's birth parents. How much do you think Jessie knows? Well, she knows something's going on. Mm -hmm. But she also knows you're both her parents and that you're going to protect her. And the day after tomorrow, we have to let them into our house. <clears throat> oh, what are you supposed to say to them? I don't know. Be nice. Sweetie, how are you? 
Okay. Jesse, this is Kara, and this is Dan. Hi. They have a, a little baby girl, Chloe. They've come to visit. She's our new baby. Do you want to meet her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sit with Daddy. There you go. That's my problem. Look who's here. <laughs> That's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe we could all go outside. was instant, a natural blood affinity. Children are not as fragile as the Debors say. They're somewhere between forged steel and delicate teacups. of our love. I can't take that away. Nobody can take that away. Hello? The United States Supreme Court today denied two emergency requests to delay a state court order requiring the two-year-old Jessica DeBoer be returned to her biological parents. Earlier this week, speaking for the majority of the court, Justice Stevens ruled that the DeBoer's claim that Jessica's best interests will be served by allowing them to retain custody of her is based on the relationship that they have been able to develop with her after it became clear that they were not entitled to adopt her. Justice Stevens ruled that the law does not authorize unrelated persons to retain custody of a child whose parents have not been found unfit. Today in dissent, Justice Blackman stated he was not willing to wash his hands of a case with the personal vulnerability of the child so much at risk. Justice Sandra Day O'Connor joined in the minority opinion, and the transfer will take place as scheduled next Monday, August 2nd at 2 p.m. We won.
the hardest thing I've been a part of. And all I can do is count the days until my last moment, the last hour, the last kiss. That's all I can do. want you to go live with baby Chloe and play with her. I know. I know, sweetheart. I know. There are other people who love you, Jesse. When I see the moon, Jesse, perhaps it's just something to hold on to. But I think it's going to be looking down on you, too. Jesse, this is the last entry in your diary.
tell you. I want you to look in the mirror. You see that girl? I want you to know that mommy loves Jesse. And daddy loves Jesse. Gamma loves Jesse. Miles loves Jesse. Barry loves Jesse. Everyone loves Jesse. You want some more toothpaste? Mm. I did. Just a little. Jess, so Ellen's here. And she's going to take you in her car. Remember? Mm. Remember, she's going to take you to Dan and Kara. Mommy and Daddy love you so much, Jesse. Always. Always, sweetheart. Forever and ever. <laughs> That's not he's doing that, right? Okay. You want to say goodbye to Miles? Let me hold your toothbrush. Say goodbye. Tell him you love him. I love him. Bye bye. Okay, I'll be. Come on, boy. You're staying here. All right, all right. Hmm. Hmm. Stay tuned. Next on True Movies 1. Texas Justice, Part 1.